Hello everyone, welcome back to a new session on dentistry and more. So today we are seeing about the difference between primate space and leeway space. So this is very important to understanding the occlusion concept in uh, our dentition because the next video will be seeing mesial shift, the early mesial shift and late mesial shift. How the permanent molars are getting into its final position utilizing the primate space or leeway space. So it is nothing but the space available and which is being utilized by the permanent molars to accommodate to its final position. So let's move on to primate space. It is also known as simian space or anthropoid space which is present in mostly 87% of the cases. So it is present between an upper arch between the lateral incisor and canines that is anterior to canine whereas in lower arch it is present between canines and first molars that is posterior to canine. So it is easy to remember this way anterior to canine in upper arch and posterior, posterior to canine in lower arch. So this canine uh, lateral in maxilla, canine and molars in mandible. So this is primate space or physiologic space which is utilized by the permanent molars because once it erupts, the erupting force pushes these deciduous molars into this space and giving space for this permanent molars so that we'll be seeing in next video so that is the primate space so what is leeway space leeway space is nothing but it is a difference between the mesiodistal dimension that is the mesiodistal width of primary canine and molars primary canine and molars with against its successors that is permanent canine and premolars so that is the difference between primary canine and primary molars that is first and second molars against permanent canine and first and second premolar because the successor deciduous canine will be replaced by permanent canine the first and second molars will be replaced by first and second premolar so that is the leeway space the mesiodistal difference so definitely it will be larger in deciduous dentition and this space will be utilized by permanent molars where the primate spaces are absent so this will be happening only when the deciduous molars are exfoliated that we'll be seeing in a mesial shift concept so this is nothing but the difference between mesiodistal width of primary canine and molars against prime permanent canine and premolars so this will be utilized in late mesial shift to reach to class 1 occlusion when primate space is absent so this is maxillary it is lesser 0.9 mm per side that is 1.8 mm total whereas uh, in deciduous it is 1.7 mm and it is 2.5 mm it is average so 1.7 mm in lower arch and 3.4 mm in total so upper arch it is 1.8 mm and lower arch it is 3.4 mm which will be utilized by the permanent molars if primate space is absent for to getting to its final position so that is primate space and leeway space this is important in understanding the concept of mesial shift that is early mesial shift and late mesial shift so next video i'll be explaining about early and late mesial shift okay thank you